Agility. One of RuneScape's most controversial skills. Given the ever-present need to conserve run energy and how the graceful outfit has become all but mandatory, I'm sure we're all a bit too familiar with many of the common training courses throughout the game. But there's one course that no one uses, and today, I'm gonna test it out and learn everything there is to know about RuneScape's forgotten agility course. Let me catch you up to speed. Roll the intro. The map of RuneScape is divided into chunks. As a one chunk man, I'll have to complete all tasks in a chunk before moving on to the next. And I'll be starting right here in Yanil. Welcome back to Yanil, where today we'll be looking at the many odd and unknown ways to train agility in the city, among other things. Hopefully, we'll be unlocking a lot of new areas, methods, and monsters to kill. That means new loot, including a melee weapon upgrade, and my best source of runes in the whole chunk. To quickly recap, here are the chunk tasks. Last episode we hit one of our skilling goals, 65 thieving to pickpocket a watchman, but we couldn't actually complete the task because the watchmen are in the watchtower, which I can't access just yet. We also took on the massive grind of luring and killing 4,000 dwarves for smithing supplies. These will hopefully turn into enough knives to reach level 50 range. But before we can start smithing, I need 10 magic levels to unlock superheat items since half of my supplies are ores. That will be one of the big goals for this episode alongside agility. Speaking of which, last time we left off I showed you that I had finally lamped my agility to level 5. Why does this matter? Well, it's because of these weird rocks here. They're actually an agility shortcut that requires level 5, but they're kinda bizarre. They don't even have an animation, you just teleport through the wall and get 25 agility XP. Also, they're not even marked on the map like these other shortcuts. And they're like 10 tiles away from another shortcut that does the exact same thing, except the rocks are one way. Weirdness aside, the fact that they give 25 XP per climb means I have a repeatable agility training method. So let's get some levels. My tomb will run all the way around the entire wall. I think I'm gonna time this and see how long it takes. All right, that took 38 seconds. 38 seconds per 25 agility XP. Oh, and that was with run energy. So without run energy, that's gonna take twice as long. So it's gonna take me a full minute to walk all the way around. That was slow, but there we go. The very first agility level, level six agility. That means we're in a new run energy restore bracket, which is pretty exciting. And there's another one, level seven agility. Very nice. This is uh, taking a while. Eight agility, nine level 10 agility, 11, 12, 13. There's 14 agility. All right, and this should be six. Uh, this should be 16 agility. Yes, it is. And that is actually a huge deal because we can now use the agility underwall shortcut in Yanil. I've been waiting so long to climb into hole. <laughs> oh, this is gonna feel so good. That all sounded really weird. I'm sorry. Oh, look at that. This is just beautiful. Crawling in a hole like a true Yanil man. These XP rates are about to be just off the charts. Am I too excited to get 25 XP every 10 seconds? Yes. But you know, having fun while I'm playing. And here's the first of the last two levels I'll be getting here. 17 agility. And here it is. This should be one of the last rock wall climbs because there is 18 agility. Shout out to the climbing rocks here, but their time has come to an end because I now have access to a much better and equally as weird training method. Climbing up this trellis, it gives a whopping 31 agility XP and puts me right here, right next to these guys. Finally, the watchmen are accessible. They're only level 33. For some reason in my mind, they're higher level than that. I can finish up a goal I've been waiting to complete. Let's pickpocket a watchman. There we go. And 137 thieving XP, are you kidding me? And look at their loot, it's really good. 60 coins and a piece of bread? Now, of course, they do catch you very often. I mean, I think my current rate is less than 50%. 
which is pretty insane. So this will be slow, but it'll be a lot faster than Thieving Men. Anyway, that's for another time. Right now, I want to check out something that I've been wondering for a long time. I want to see if I can start the Watchtower quest. Okay, we can start the Watchtower quest. That bodes well for the future. Let's just say there will be some uses for a little bit of progress into the Watchtower quest down the line. So keep that in the back of your mind. Also, I wonder if any of these other wizards have anything to say. Um, we ben jij en wat doe je in mentoren? I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, ik hoor het al. Je bent gewoon een idioot die hier per toeval naar boven is gelopen. I can't understand a word you're saying. Hey there, sounds like you need Babbel. Helemaal juist. What's Babbel? Babbel is the number one language learning app in the world. And they're the sponsor of today's video. All right, I'm listening. Babbel has everything you need to start learning a new language with lessons that are designed by real language teachers. It's even scientifically proven to help you start learning a new language in three weeks. The cross-platform app is super easy to use and lets you learn on your own time, which means that Babbel will help you hit your language goals whether you want to become fluent or just learn a few phrases for when you go on vacation. We all know that the OSRS community is all over the world. UK, America, Belgium, Sweden, Australia, Germany, just to name a few. Being part of such a global community has inspired me to use Babbel to learn new languages so I can be more connected. So next time you're working on a boring RuneScape grind, instead of watching some TV show or guzzling YouTube videos, why not skill up in real life and learn a new language on the other monitor? To get started with Babbel, use my link in the description and get up to 60% off your subscription to start learning a new language today. And when you do, you'll be supporting the channel directly, so I'd really appreciate you checking it out. I know you won't be disappointed. Thanks again to Babbel for sponsoring this video. Anyway, back to the agility grind. Let's take a look at my new method. The new method is climb up the trellis, climb down the ladder, and repeat. <laughs> Apparently this can give upwards to 10k XP per hour, but I'll probably be looking at more like 4 to 5k since I'll be running out of run energy all the time. Also, apparently this is part of the RuneScape 3 meta for training agility, being the best XP from levels 18 to 30. Weird. Hopefully I'll only need to do this until level 40, at which point we gain access to the aforementioned forgotten agility course, but I'll save it until then to go into more detail. For now, another agility level montage. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, agility. Woohoo! These are some great levels. It's a stupid thing to say. 26 agility! 27, 28, 29, and the big 30 agility! We can now use the penguin agility course, which I just recently learned is the fastest way to get the squirrel pet. Did not know that. So I just got this strange fruit here, which is really convenient because oddly enough, these things work as anti-poisons and there's gonna be a lot of poison where we're going. 31, 32, 33 agility. I haven't really looked at these beds yet. Some sleepy men up here, huh? 34, 35, 36, 37, and that's 38 agility. We actually get something kind of interesting in one more level. Well, I clicked right through it, but that's level 39 agility, which unlocks a very interesting shortcut. The Yanil wall, I can use the grapple now, which obviously I can't do because I don't have access to a crossbow, except the hunter's crossbow that I've been mentioning can actually fire a mithril grapple. So I'll have to do that eventually once I get access to the thing that is stopping me, which is rope. <laughs> And this is a big one. Level 40 agility. Hmm. Interesting that they neglect to mention a very important unlock. One might even say that makes it forgotten. It's finally time to delve into one of the least visited places in all of RuneScape, the Yanil Agility Dungeon. We'll call this part Fun Yanil Agility Dungeon Facts, because I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this place since I'm guessing most of you have never really looked around inside. Now I have to be honest, calling it an agility course is a little wrong. It has obstacles like your typical agility course, but they're all different levels. But also, they're not agility shortcuts since you can't get further into the dungeon without using them. That puts the agility dungeon in a unique category all of its own, with the closest thing to compare it to being maybe the agility obstacles in the underground pass. Compelling, I know. Let's take a look at the obstacles. The first is the balance ledge. It requires level 40 agility, gives 22.5 XP per cross, and if you fail, you fail. This place doesn't mess around. You get dropped into a lower level filled with poison spiders whose poison starts at 6, and you take up to 15 damage from the fall. Without 40 agility, you can't proceed further into the dungeon at all, but even just crossing this ledge gains me access to a bunch of interesting things. 
Next up is the Pipe Squeeze, which requires 49 agility. It gains you access to this room full of skeletons. Thankfully, you can't fail this one, but it only gives 7.5 XP per cross. The next obstacle is the Monkey Bars, which require 57 agility and give 20 XP per cross. If you fail, these will also drop you into the Poison Spider level, but even further from the exit. Crossing these grants access to probably one of the most important things in my entire chunk, the Chaos Druids. We all know these guys are amazing for herbs, but I'll actually be killing them for their excellent rune drops. These will be my main source of magic XP for the rest of the chunk, taking me all the way to 66 magic. Last but not least, there's one more obstacle, this pile of rubble. It can't be failed and gives 5.5 XP per climb, and it requires 67 agility, which is the goal I've had on the chunk task since episode 1. But it's not just an arbitrary goal, because beyond this obstacle is the end boss of the dungeon, who's involved in one of the strangest magic training methods I've ever heard of, but that's for another time. If you enjoy these types of educational deep dives, well, first of all, you're going to love the rest of this video, but more importantly, leave a comment and let me know, and be sure to subscribe if you aren't already. Alright, I am gearing up. It's time to explore the agility dungeon for the first time. I've got my inventory set up with food and an emergency strange fruit in case I get poisoned, which I probably will. Down we go. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I guess I don't really know how this is going to go. Let's just see if we can get across this. We can, very nice. 22 agility XP, that's not very much. Ideally, I would like this to be my new agility method, but it depends on just how bad it is to fall down. So let's do this until we fall. So far, kind of liking this. I haven't fallen down very much. I don't know what the rates are on this, but they seem to be pretty good. <coughs> oh man. And there's the poison. This is what the emergency strange fruit is for. The question is, can we out heal the poison? That's the big question. If we can't, this uh, might not be particularly feasible. Now I'm going to do something brave. I'm going to bravely use one prayer point. I do believe I have access to a method to restore my prayer. Let's take a look over here. I haven't actually showed you what's going on over here. We've got this chaos altar. I'm pretty sure that if I pray at this, it's gonna dump me in the basement, but it should restore my prayer. So let's see if I'm right. It did restore my prayer and it dropped me in the basement. It dealt me so much damage. I have no idea how much it was, it was so much. That was so much damage, dude. What was this, like a 15 or something? Oh, but that means I can consistently restore my prayer. What the hell? How is this? I've always seen that as like a pit. What is he standing on? What is, that looks so weird. Okay, it's time to officially test the XP down here. We're gonna see just how long it takes to go through a whole inventory of food and if the XP is better than the trellis. Whoa. Ooh getting stacked out over here. Okay, the food is gone and I'm down to just my emergency strange fruit. Report on the XP rates? Uh, really bad. <laughs> I think I got 1.5k XP in 15 minutes and ate an entire inventory of cheese potatoes which heals 16 each. And I'm dying as I do this VO so I'm just gonna be right back. Uh, let's try it again. Let's just give it one more shot. Do, do, do. Don't mind me, guys. Just restoring my prayer here at the Chaos Altar. Oof. 15 damage. I have been going on this last bit of XP for, like, so long. Alright, if I can just make it back across here, I can't. And I'm starting to fear for my life. With this tick, I'm definitely in kill range. And I have a long time left on this, so let's see if we can get out of here and not die to poison on the way to the bank. Oh god, that was so painfully close. Well, I literally couldn't get through one agility level down there, and I went through two full inventories of food, which, by the way, adds up to 864 points of healing. I definitely don't have the food to sustain that much damage for very long, and I'm not sure the XP is even any better than the trellis, so I think I'm just going to head back there for now. And there's 41 agility. I'm gonna shoot for 49 before going back to the agility dungeon because that's when we open up the next piece of content down there. I got a visit from my friend Old School Soundscape who has a series all about RuneScape's many music tracks. We hung out for a bit and I showed him around Yanil, but then I accidentally did this. 
What the f <laughs> I just left my chunk <laughs> by clicking that. Well, I just unlocked music track by doing that. That's I didn't realize it would let me jump down. The funny part is, why did it put me there? Right? Why didn't it put me right here? Shout out to Old School Soundscape for stopping by, and if you're a music enjoyer, go check out his channel. I linked the episode where you can hear our longer conversation in the description. I think I need to talk to Skeldor about his duck plugin. Uh, that's a lot of ducks. I don't know. I don't know if those are all supposed to be there. And here it is, 49 agility. We can access the Yanil dungeon small room using contortion. Well then, that's one way to put that. So let's go ahead and head down there. And here we are. Let's take a look at our new unlock. This squeeze pipe. Woo! Yeah, 8 XP. Oh my god, these guys are smacking me up. Thankfully, we've got our emergency herring down here. Is it is it a trap? No, it's just a, it's just an actual it's an actual herring. These skeletons have surprisingly good drops for me. The biggest thing I want from this room is an iron scimitar, which is a pretty decent melee weapon upgrade, even over the steel longsword, since it's a tick faster. That's a pretty nice drop right there. Five chaos runes off these guys. Love to see it. We're going to be using all of our chaos runes on Crumble Undead once we hit level 37 magic and have access to enough air runes to cast all of them. And that's another good drop. These drops are looking a little familiar now. A bronze bar and chaos runes looking a little bit like the dwarves. Hey, let's go. And that's another one of the huge drops I've been looking for. Law runes are very first law runes on the account. <laughs> There's something I've been very curious to use these law runes on. Not gonna lie, this herring spawn is actually kind of awesome. It's been a lot of healing from eating that same fish. No idea why it's here, but uh, you know, I kind of appreciate it. It's like a friend. Friendly herring. Hey, hey, and there is another unique drop. Cosmic runes. These are the only way I can get these in my chunk is from these skeletons. There's one more thing in this room that I haven't mentioned yet, but to talk about it, I want to give you a little runescape history lesson as the context is really interesting. Let's go back to 2002. RuneScape Classic is in its second year since launch. It's around this time that many of the skills we now know were added to the game. Herblore, or Herb Law as it was originally called, Thieving, and Agility to name a few. As for Agility, the Yanil Dungeon was one of the three courses added to the game with the skills launch, the other two being the Gnome and Barbarian courses. One of the things that came with it was this chest called the Sinister Chest. That may ring a bell if you've ever spent time catching magpie implings as they have a chance to drop the Sinister Key, which, unsurprisingly, opens the Sinister Chest. But back in 2002, the only way to get the key was by reaching level 67 agility to access the end boss of this dungeon, Salar and the Twisted, who is immune to everything except attacks from the mind? I'll let you think about that one. The cool part about the Sinister Chest though? Opening it always gives a mix of mid to high level herbs, including one Torstal. Upon release, this was the one and only singular way of getting Torstals. Think about that. The only way that Torstals were entering the game was by players getting to level 67 in a brand new skill, traversing a dangerous dungeon, killing a mysterious boss, and opening an inconspicuous chest. Also, to be clear, in RuneScape Classic, there were basically no agility shortcuts and there was no run energy since running wasn't a thing. That meant the agility dungeon was the end game for agility. You literally trained it so you could access this area and do a couple of quests. Looking back on that era, while I wasn't playing then, I do love this design philosophy in retrospect. The agility dungeon combined many of the new skills in one challenging area, full of danger but also full of rewards you couldn't get anywhere else. Don't forget that level 82 thieving allows you to pick the lock to the area by the chaos druids, who at the time were likely the best source of herbs in the game. I think in a way, it was actually an early prototype of modern OSRS gameplay patterns. You level up one skill to increase efficiency in another, creating an interwoven web of goals and activities. And while this content is totally dead now, at the time I imagined it was a highly immersive dungeon exploring experience that deserves a little more attention. Anyway, back to the action, I realized I hadn't actually looked over here yet. These monkey bars are the next goal, they require 57 agility and when we can cross them we'll finally be able to access the chaos druids to train some magic. But right now I actually want to see what kind of drops these chaos druid warriors have. That's a pretty tasty drop, nature runes, we love to see those, that's some free magic XP. That is a good drop. Oh my god. 36 air runes is such an insanely good drop. And this is going to be the amount of air runes we're getting from Chaos Druids down the line. 
Time for the uh, restore your prayer without dying and uh, getting poisoned challenge. Let's do this. We win. Good job. The loot from these skeletons and cast druids is really promising, but there is one thing I've been wanting to try for a long time. So uh, let's go do that. So by finally getting access to law runes, that means we've unlocked telekinetic grab. And there's something I've been wanting to try for a really long time, which is telegrabbing this cup of tea. Can it be done? This is a massive moment for me. If we can telegrab this cup of tea. <laughs> you telegrabbing fiend? Okay, God, this dude, he's thought of everything. What a shame. Thankfully, there's another pretty good use for telekinetic grab, and I realized I hadn't shown myself walking out this door in quite a while, but just as a reminder, I do have access to all of this area here, as you can see from the chunk borders. And if I'm not wrong, I should be able to telegrab these Jangerberries berries off this ogre island. Yes! Yes, I can! So that is another item that I now have access to. They restore one prayer point, if you weren't aware, but uh, perhaps... More importantly, these are a good use for all these law runes that we have now and that we will be continuing to get in the future and rake in some really, really, really nice magic XP. So yeah, I'm excited to have unlocked a whole bunch of new items just now. Law runes, cosmic runes, and Jenger berries, among more things that we haven't seen yet. So with the new areas explored, the truth is that my next best move is to reach level 57 agility and unlock the Chaos Druids. And there's the mime mask. Finally, I can look like a psycho. And we're hitting the milestone here with level 50 agility. I have a little theory I want to test. Got my steel plate body and my food. And I'm going back into the agility dungeon to test out a little theory I have about run energy. You know how there are some old quests that have an agility obstacle that care about how much run energy you have? That you'll fail it if you have no run energy, but you'll succeed it if you have lots of run energy? I'm going to test that out with this course. I have a feeling that more run energy equals more successes on this balance ledge. So my plan is to run some tests. I want to see how many successes I get at 100 run energy and how many I get at zero run energy. I'll do 100 attempts on each to see if I can find some results. All right, first report at full run energy, it was 87 successes and 13 failures. It's an 87% success rate. So now let's see with zero run energy how that compares. All right, uh, this is interesting. So on the uh, 100 runs of no run energy, we had 19 fails, which is uh, not that much higher, but it is higher. Now it's getting me really curious. I'm going to have to keep testing this. So now I'm going to wait for my run energy to restore. And we're going to do this again because now I need to know. All right, I believe I've disproven my own theory here. We've done another total count of full run energy and we have an 18% fail rate this time. So it looks like the rate is probably somewhere between 13 and 20%. I'll do one more test just to be sure. But before that, I have some important business to attend to. How dare that poison interrupt my raking. Alright, I'm killing this Chaos Druid to mark the end of my final shimmy across the ledge, completing the 100 laps of no run energy. Interestingly, I got the same rate as the first time. 13 fails and 87 successes. So that clearly puts the nail in the coffin for the run energy theory. But while my experiment was a failure, it led me down a new research project. I've been working to discover as much as I can about the Agility Dungeon, but little is officially known about the success rates of these obstacles. The wiki had almost no information on this forgotten content, so I took to Twitter to get answers from the man himself, Mod Ash. Through a long conversation where I definitely kind of pissed him off by asking too many questions in a row, I was starting to get some numbers. Using these and some other numbers I got from members of the wiki team, I sat down and did some honest to goodness paper and pencil math to sort out the success rates. I then took it upon myself to add these to the wiki for both the balance ledge and the monkey bars. But why stop there? I consider myself one of the leading experts on the agility dungeon at this point, so I spruced up the wiki page. 
If you looked at it a few weeks ago, it would have looked like this. Now, it looks like this. So, to anyone looking at that page in the future, you're welcome. Through all this research, I did discover one huge piece of information that will impact my account directly. Apparently, this balance ledge stops failing entirely around level 65, with success rates getting very good starting in the early 60s. At 65, the XP becomes a consistent 15k per hour with minimal effort. Given that I need to get to level 67, and Trellis XP sits around 5 to 10k per hour, this is a major upgrade that will potentially save me many, many hours of training agility. Alright, with my experimentation done, we are going to get back to grinding at the Trellis until we get some more levels, but... Speaking of levels, we've got one here, 27 farming. You're just one level away from the farming goal. 51, 52, 53 agility. I've discovered another strange thing. If you leave this dialog box open and then you wait 15 minutes and click off of it, boom, instant weeds. <laughs> I'm joined by Miss Clue to open up a uh, mystery box. We'll see if we get some good luck on this one. Please, 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 Mithril Scimitar. Okay, okay, actually 20 nature runes. That's one of the better drops I can get at this point. That's actually really, really good. Nice. And we're back with another mystery box opening. What could it be this time? I got an onion. That that's not a not a mithril scimitar. It's really not. No. He died doing what he loved. Sorry, man man. No, I don't plan on going on my own. <laughs> I had a couple friends stop by, so I've been training down here. And there we go, 56 agility, just one more now. And we can access the Chaos Druids. Finally, the Mime gear. <laughs> and I do believe that that means that we have completed the random event collection log minus the legendary stale baguette. I decided to stream hitting the new milestone over on Twitch. If you want to know about future streams or just want to hang out, join the Isn't Gamers Discord. Link in the description. I'm usually on and I'm always happy to chat. Hey, and there is 200,000 agility XP. That is really clean to see. The rates of this and the thieving grind really aren't that different, but for some reason this just feels a lot faster. Dramatic moment. Not the poison interrupting the raking. There it is, level 28 farming. We can now grow wild blood hops, which was the goal for farming. So we can plant those there. Once I get some, I actually don't have any right now. So uh, we're gonna have to farm some of those up from ogres later. Um, I'm gonna put that on the back burner for now because we have more important things, but I no longer have to rake. What? What's going on with, the, with this texture? You guys see that? How did it take me till now to notice that? What the? All right, guys, here we go. The last crossing. Please don't fail. Please, no! Okay, one more time. 57 agility, let's go. Yes. And see how they neglect to mention that you can now cross the monkey bars in the Yanil agility dungeon. Why don't you say that, RuneScape? First time, first time crossing the monkey bars. Can we, can we succeed? Please succeed. Yo, I did not succeed. <laughs> Come on now. We made it. We made it. We're at the Chaos Druids. It's been such a long time coming. This is so, so hype. Why don't we explore a little bit? There's still a little bit more to see. This door is here. Uh, it's a one-way door. So I can leave this way, which is pretty nice. I don't have to fear for my life getting poisoned on the way out. And uh, the other one is uh, over here. There's this really great looking, I mean, just look, look how good this is, you guys. Just, that's uh, this is some quality programming going on here. Love what they've done with the place. There's these stairs, which take me to this weird room, I guess you call it. And there it is, this is a lock pick that I need to pick the lock that gets us down here. Now that's pretty cool. The only other thing in this entire room that's actually worth noting is this pile of rubble. And that's where my 67 agility requirement comes from. And that's gonna take us to that guy I was talking about, Salar and the Twisted. But that is a grind for another time. So with 57 agility out of the way, we can now kill these Chaos Druids. Like I said earlier, they'll be the main source of runes I use to train all the way to 66 magic. Although right now my big goal is to get to level 43 so I can start superheating my smithing supplies and hit my range skilling goal. The Chaos Druids insane drop rate of air runes will make casting all my combat spells a non-issue. But from this point on, I need to start saving all my mind runes for a future method that I'll talk about later. Instead, I'm going to focus on the law runes they drop. I plan on using Telegrab to level up until I can cast Crumble Undead. I have over 500 cast runes in the bank, so I'm hoping those will carry me the rest of the way to level 43. 
Yo, it's so many errors. 36, it's just so many. 69 combat, let's go. Here you can see me trying to set up a level for YouTube purposes and failing, but here's 65 strength. What the? I was just running by and I saw this guy in here killing skeletons and I had to pop in and see what he was doing. Oh my god. I just came in here to kill one skeleton and talk to this guy and we got the iron scimitar. Let's go. That's so good. That's actually so lucky for me. And that did in fact net us another max hit. We can hit nines with this thing. That's going to speed this up by a lot. Not a super notable milestone, but there's 66 strength, and that is a big milestone. Level 70 combat. Let's go. Killing these castroids has been so much fun. I've really, really enjoyed this. Chaos Talisman. All right, I guess I have the two rare Talisman drops. That's funny. <laughs> I've been killing Chaos Druids for a while now, and I think I have enough runes to get to level 37 magic for Crumble Undead. We're gonna get to telegrabbing some Jangerberries, because that's the best thing I have to telegrab. 43 magic XP, that's so good. Oh, they respawn really fast, whoa. I thought I was gonna have a world hop. Wow, this is even better than I thought. They're like immediately respawning, that's crazy. I'm gonna note these Jangerberries on the Tool Leprechaun. Saves me just a little bit of a run to the bank. And there is the first magic level of the grind. 34 magic. 35 magic. And there's 36 magic. And I am now, just now, looking at my spellbook and realizing that it is not level 37 magic to cast Rumble Undead, but level 39. So I'm doing this a little prematurely, I guess. <laughs> We're definitely going to need to head back down and pick up some more law runes before we can actually do our crumble undead session. But, uh, you know, it's all part of the grind. We're going to kill more cast druids eventually. So, yeah. All right. Last one for the level. The <laughs> incorrect level, but a level nonetheless. 37 magic. We will have to head back down to chaos druids and pick up a couple more runes. Hey, there's a fun milestone. Level 60 hit points. All right, all right. I gathered up some more law runes. There is 38. And here we go. This is the last one. 39 magic. And we all know that means we can now crumble undead successfully. Not level 37, level 39. So let's go get geared up for that and we'll go crumble some skeletons. All right, we're geared up with our one magic bonus from the old iron dagger <laughs> and of course the wizard's hat and over 500 casts of crumble undead hmm well this is gonna be fun hey and there's the iron axe that's a nice axe upgrade and there's a cool one level 40 magic and there we go these guys do drop chaos runes so we can kind of restock this a little bit and keep it going past just the 500 casts i brought there's 41 we've unlocked the use of death runes only place i'll be getting those anytime soon is the maze random which i do believe i'm gonna switch to actually doing the maze this time instead of just standing at the chest so does that count as a new optimization i don't know 42 just one more to go and there it is 43 magic yo finally we can cast super heat that's so good and we had plenty of casts to spare i'm just gonna finish these up and then I think that's probably going to be the end of the episode. All right, the chaos runes are done. Not much in terms of interesting loot, but I did get two bronze bars and this iron axe. So it's actually maybe not as bad as I thought. Those will help with the range grind and an axe upgrade is always good. All right, that's it for this episode. Here are the stats. We made a ton of progress in agility, unlocking most of the agility dungeon and got a handful of combat levels killing the chaos druids. As for the chunk tasks, we completed the farming goal and got to 43 magic for superheat item. Let's actually go ahead and superheat the first ore. There we go, six smithing XP and one bronze bar. Next episode, we'll be using up all the smithing supplies and hopefully getting to level 50 range with just bronze and iron knives. But until then, if you enjoyed this episode with all of its obscure RuneScape trivia, please hit that subscribe button. And if you liked my original music throughout, you can listen to it with the playlist in the description. Oh, and a big shout out to Happery for his help with the voice lines and the sponsorship. Go check out his One Chunk UIM series if you haven't already. Or if you crave more from me, I've got another region locked series you can catch up on. So until next time, bye bye